Hey everyone, welcome to this video where we'll be taking a look at a project that can generate original and unique Pokemon cards using OpenAI, Midjourney, and Python. Here's an example of a generated card. This is Fauna, a grass-type starter Pokemon with a Petal Burst ability. It evolves into Buckrim and finally into Armageld. These Pokemon cards are part of an original collection created almost entirely by AI, including the name, the artwork, and the evolution line. So that in the end, we have a large and diverse collection of really interesting Pokemon of different creature types, different elements, different rarity, and a clear, consistent visual style between them. My name is Jack, and I'm a software engineer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I built an AI Pokemon card generator using Python, OpenAI GPT-3, and Midjourney. Throughout this video, we'll be covering the project design, so things like the strategy, all the different pieces, and how the entire project's put together. We'll take a look at some of the more interesting challenges and solutions that I discovered whilst working on this project. And finally, we'll take a look at the results of the project as well, including all the cards that we can create from it, the actual command line, and the source code in GitHub and how you can use it if you want to make your own Pokemon cards. This video will definitely be more focused on the overall design and strategy of the project itself rather than step-by-step -step coding examples. But if you do want to take a look at the code, the entire project will be available on GitHub in the video description. So if you're ready to be a Pokemon master, then let's get started. Today's AI Pokemon generator project is going to be a Python command line interface or a CLI program that you can use directly from the terminal. You can use it to generate a collection of as many Pokemon cards as you want by just putting in a number. And when you run it, it will create Pokemon with unique names, abilities, descriptions, and artwork prompts whilst trying to avoid repeated animal types within the same collection. Some of them will even be part of an evolution series. And then you can use the artwork prompts that it generates for you with an AI service called Midjourney to get unique artwork. And then you can download those images and put it inside a specific folder in the app so that you can run the app again to have it use that artwork to generate actual Pokemon card images. And if you want even more control of the Pokemon card generator, then it allows you to pass in a custom subject type. That can be anything you want, and it will try to base the Pokemon design on that subject instead of picking a random animal, which is the default behavior. And this doesn't even have to be a real animal. For example, I can run this generator and pass in a pumpkin as a subject or a sphinx. If I have a very specific type of animal that I want to use as a subject, for example, my dog, which is a Papillon, then I can pass that in to generate a Pokemon card that's based on my dog directly as well. So that was a really quick overview of the entire project end to end. Now let's take a look at the design. When it comes to software design, I find that the best place to start is with the problem that we're trying to solve. So let's start with this. Here's an example of a real Pokemon card that was published in 1996. Take note of the key elements we want to reproduce, like the HP of the Pokemon, its abilities, the name, the element of the Pokemon, the artwork, and the rarity. They also have evolved forms. I want my program to be able to make me a collection of 100 cards just like these. And out of these cards, I also want the artwork, I want unique creature types, and I also want them to be able to evolve. Now those are the main difficult problems I want to solve, but there are additional minor requirements that we probably should consider at this point as well. So in my collection, I want quite a nice even mix of all the different elements. Uh, I also want unique and original names for the Pokemon. I want abilities that just make sense. For example, a stronger or a rarer Pokemon should have better abilities than a weaker one. So there's gotta be some kind of point budgeting system. And I also want a unique Pokemon description for the card. Even though it doesn't appear in the card itself, I think it'll be fun to have. And this is just like a text prose description that describes the Pokemon and what it does and just kind of adds a little bit of flavor to the world that we're building. So now that we know what the major problems are that we want to solve, let's take a look at some of the major solutions we can use and how we can connect them together to build this project. To me, the most difficult problem is generating the artwork. For the artwork, there's not a lot of options to automate it. There's either DALI from OpenAI, Stable Diffusion, or Midjourney. I chose Midjourney here because I think the output looks the best for this type of project. By the way, if you've never heard of any of these technologies before, then you can think of them as basically uh, text-to-image services that are based on AI, and they will accept a natural language text prompt like this, for example, a person crossing the street juggling three pineapples. And it will interpret that message and turn it into an image. 
Similarly, for the Pokemon names and descriptions, I don't have too many options to automate that if I want results with high quality and range. For this task, I'll use OpenAI's GPT-3, which is a natural language AI model as well, except that it has an API. And I can ask it to generate Pokemon-like names or descriptions as long as I give it a prompt of what I want. And it could give me a response that looks like this. Now, the challenge here is that the response structure from OpenAI's GPT-3 can vary. For example, if I ask it to give me a list of things, uh, it can either give me like a numbered list or it give me a bulleted list or it could just separate them with commas. And I don't really have a way to know what it's gonna respond to me. Sometimes it doesn't really respect my prompt commands, even if I say I want a comma separated list. So a challenge that we'll have to do as well is to clean that data that we get back and make sure that it's separated, trimmed, um, filtered properly so that we just get the data that we want in the format that we want. Now with these two major pieces in place, I can start building the rest of the app around this using Python. And the idea is that when you run the app, it will put together some very basic metadata for a Pokemon. For example, it's elements, rarity, number of abilities, number of evolutions, and creature type. And here is an example of the metadata the Python portion of the app can generate. And this is relatively easy. We could just have a set of strings for each possible value and have Python cobble together a random combination of those values. Once we have the metadata, we can create a prompt for GPT-3 to come up with a name and a description for this Pokemon. A prompt is just a text instruction that we will give to the AI model so that it can give us a response. And this is relatively easy as well. We can just create a template message for this and then plug in our Pokemon metadata. And here is an example of a naming prompt for a Pokemon. Generate five unique original creative single word Pokemon name for a dynamic mythical water type chameleon Pokemon wearing white armor. It can be found in lake-like environments without using the word Pokemon or water. So as you can see, the prompt does have a lot of rules in it, different descriptions, and also restrictions. Like we don't want to use the word Pokemon or water because I found that if I ask it not to do that, it tends to kind of overload those things into the response. So let's go ahead and submit this and see what it comes up with. So we've got Aquarion, Phantoms, Sheath, Reflection, and Chromata. And then we can just get our Python app to choose any one of those and use it as a Pokemon name. And once we've picked a name, we could also use the same technique and generate a description for the Pokemon as well. So here's a second prompt to generate a short original creative Pokedex description for Aquarion, a dynamic mythical water type chameleon Pokemon wearing white armor. It can be found in lake-like environments. It has the following abilities um, and I told the prompt to be creative about its day-to-day -day life and not use the word chameleon or water or the ability names just so that you know it doesn't try to copy the prompt verbatim. And when you run that, this is the result that GPT gives us. Aquarion is an elusive mythical Pokemon that can be found in lake-like environments. Its majestic white armor gives it a distinctively regal look, and it can often be seen swimming gracefully through the water. In its daily life, Aquarian is known to rest on rocks or other surfaces, occasionally sticking its head out of the water to survey the surroundings. Its tidal rage ability is especially impressive, allowing it to unleash powerful waves of energy when threatened or provoked. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and we'll just put that away for use later on. Now, if we want the images as well, we're gonna have to do a similar thing to get the image prompts which we'll use with a different service, Midjourney, to generate our custom artwork. Now the image prompt was definitely the most challenging part of the project for me because Pokemon cards had a very specific style. And I wanted a consistent style for these cards, but I also wanted clear visual themes for the environments, for different elements. Um, so for example, like the electric type Pokemons, I wanted them to have a mostly like a yellow color and then green for the grass type Pokemons. And I also wanted the evolution to tell a story. So for each evolved form of the Pokemon, I wanted them to feel kind of visually stronger and more formidable than the previous form. I also wanted the rarity of the card to reflect in the design. So rarer Pokemons will have more details. It will have sort of more effects and more remarkable features. Whereas plain common Pokemon, well, you probably expect them not to have that same level of detail. So in the app, I ended up creating a pretty complex image prompt system that puts together different pieces of the metadata that we've generated earlier to form the prompt. Uh, but it also adds in little things to kind of achieve the other uh, requirements that we want. For example, having more and more 
progressive forms as the Pokemon evolves. And when we run the app, it will actually spit out the image font right in the terminal, but also to a file on disk that we can use later. So here's an example of the image prompt that we can generate using this app. So this is for Aquarion. It's a dynamic mythical water type chameleon Pokemon, and it's wearing white armor in a lake environment. It has a teal and blue ambient lighting, and I want it in an anime sketch style with watercolor. And then I have these mid journey flags, which is dash dash Niji, which tells it to use like a Japanese art style um, image model. And then dash dash AR three to two, which is an aspect ratio uh, of three to two, which is closer to what the Pokemon cards use for their images. The funky signs you see there with the um, double colons and then the zero after the name, and then the double colon and the 2.5 after the Pokemon description are something called Midjourney uh, weights. So when we provide the prompt, we can tell Midjourney how important the preceding text is and I gave Aquarion a weight of zero because when I generate the image, I want that to appear in the label so that I can identify it easily, but I don't want it to be part of the prompt. So that's why I set it to zero. The Pokemon itself, the subject is more important. So I put it a weight of 2.5 so that the image generation AI will focus on that subject as opposed to the rest of the details and the lighting in the environment, which I, I want to be there, but I want it to be slightly less important. So once you have the prompt, you can go to the Mid Journey Discord channel. Uh, so one of these newbies channel here, and then this is a public channel. So you can see other people using Mid Journey right now. Or if you have a membership subscription, you can use a direct message with the Mid Journey bot directly, which is what I've done so that other people don't have to see your prompts or your messages. Either way, you just type slash imagine, which is uh, one of the commands for the Mid Journey bot. And then you'll come up with a little box here to enter your prompt and we just copy paste our entire prompt that was generated from the app. So here I've just copied the entire prompt we just saw and then we'll press enter and let the bot do its magic. After about a minute, Mid Journey will message you back with four options of an image to choose from. So you pick the one that you like best, or if you don't like any of them, you can press uh, this refresh button to tell Mid Journey to do it again. But I quite like this one here, so I can choose to now have Mid Journey upscale that to an HD version of the image, which I can then download and use in my Pokemon card. So since this is the third one, this counts from one, two, three, four, so I'm gonna press U3, because this is the third one, to upscale the third image. And then again, after about a minute, Mid Journey messages us back with the fully upscaled HD version of the Pokemon. So if I click on it, it looks really good, high detail. So I can right click and save this image, and then I can use it in my app. Now going back to my project, I just put my images and I'll name it after this image file, so 002 underscore Aquarion, and put it in uh, an images folder in the same directory as my where my cards are. Um, and since I have the JSON metadata of the Pokemon and I have the source image of the Pokemon, I can go back to my Python program and then run a command like render cards and then choose the collection, which is kind of the group of Pokemon I want to render and hit enter. And this one only has the one Pokemon, so it just renders that one. So now when I go back to my project and I go to the renders folder, I'll see that it's rendered this Pokemon successfully as a card. By the way, for the cards, I use template graphics provided by this user here, Katara Waterbender or the Duck Tamer. Um, so those are the card blanks I've used and they've provided it for free online. Uh, so I just want to shout out to this person for providing those card blanks. Otherwise, I don't know how I would have gotten the actual template for the cards to put the artwork and the Pokemon abilities into. So thank you very much, the Duck Tamer. So that pretty much covers our process for generating a collection of Pokemon cards end to end. And if we take a step back, our app design looks something like this. We'll need an OpenAI account to generate the names and the descriptions, and a Midjourney account on Discord to generate the artwork. Unfortunately, there is a manual step in this whole process, which is, as you saw earlier, interacting with Midjourney's Discord to get the artwork. Midjourney doesn't currently offer any kind of public API, so we have to do it by hand. And we can maybe write a Python Selenium script to interact with Discord for us, but the Midjourney terms and conditions discourage us from doing this. So unfortunately, until a public API is available from Midjourney, we'll have to manually generate the images. Um, otherwise, that's the only thing preventing this whole process from 100% being automated and just like a one-click process to generate all these Pokemon cards. So that pretty much sums up the project architecture. Now let's take a closer look at some of the more interesting challenges that I ran into as part of building this project, because that's where I think that the best learning opportunities are. 
Here were the top three most interesting challenges I faced during the project. Monster variety, the evolution, and the prompt modeling. So the first problem is monster variety. If I stick to my previous method of just picking monsters or animals randomly from a list, then I actually run into a few problems when I begin to scale out the collection. First of all, I can have a mismatch with elements, I can have duplicates in my collection, and I can have really generic artwork. For example, a mismatch with elements is when I have a water-type bear Pokemon or a grass-type fish Pokemon. I mean, sometimes it sounds cool and sometimes the AI does make it work really well, but most of the time it's not a good result. It's not good to have like a marine animal be used as an element other than water, and it's not really good to have like a animal that's totally a land animal being used for a water type as well. Another problem is having duplicate animal types in my collection. If I pick a completely random animal for a single one-off card, that's fine because, you know, there's just one card and it doesn't matter um, what animal that is. But if I wanted to generate a collection of 100 cards, then it really sucks if I start to have repeated types of animals within that same collection. And finally, if I'm not specific enough about my animal type, for example, if I just say bird, instead of eagle or falcon or flamingo, then the generated artwork tends to find the middle ground between you know, all types of birds, which usually is quite bland. So um, not just that, but animals alone are not enough for a prompt to be really creative with the art. If you look at the original Pokemon collection, notice how many of them have some really distinguishing patterns or details. For example, holding an object or having a distinct characteristic on their body. So to address some of those problems, I actually ended up building quite an elaborate system to define the relationships between distinct details like claws, horns, or even items like hammers, swords, shields, or even like things that they can wear, like a mask or a crown, uh, defining those relationships with different types of animals and like more specific types as well. So not just like a mammal or like a dog, but maybe like a wolf, bear, gorilla, you know, lynx. So different, more specific types of animals with, you know, unique characteristics. And there's all sorts of different types of animals in groups like reptiles, marine animals, birds. Finally, I also defined the relationship of those animal types with the elements that I want them to appear in. So for example, the water element mostly just has marine creatures and reptiles, and the marine creatures don't appear in any of the other elements because it just doesn't usually quite make sense. So that's pretty much how I kind of built a system to get some randomness, some interesting combinations that doesn't require the user to be too specific about what they want because I do want it to be an automated process, but still it has enough guardrails to make sure that the output isn't completely random and it doesn't kind of look really bad when you have duplicates in one collection. And to solve the problem of having duplicate Pokemon in the same collection, I basically use a set operation and I kind of remember the types of Pokemon that I've seen already as part of that collection. So if I've generated a monkey already in this collection, then I will avoid trying to generate another monkey whilst there are other types of animals to choose from. Now the system isn't perfect and there's still a lot of work to do to get a nice variety of types and to get the right objects and descriptions, but it does a good enough job to get me most of the way there. And if I just run uh, the command to generate a large collection of Pokemon, I'll see that I get a lot of different unique types. For example, here I get an ostrich, a frilled lizard, a chameleon, um, a grass type lynx, an electric type bird, uh, a psychic type hawk. So yeah, there's quite a lot of variety and they don't overlap with, you know, the same animal types between different Pokemon. It could still use a lot more work, but it's already giving me much higher quality prompts than what I had at the start. Another major challenge of this project was the evolution of Pokemon. It's easy enough to generate individual and unrelated Pokemon cards, but a core mechanic of the Pokemon games were that Pokemons could evolve. So in this project, I made it that whenever you generate a card, it had a chance to be part of an evolution evolution series, and it could have up to three different forms. Now when a card evolves, I want to make the subsequent card in the series more rare than the previous one and more powerful than the previous one. That's not a really hard problem in itself because uh, we could just use a bit of math to bump up the stats for each series in the evolution. The more difficult problem was to have the series of evolution uh, use the same animal or the same monster type 
but show it at different stages of growth, from being a baby Pokemon to a normal sized Pokemon after one evolution, and then finally to a fully grown legendary Pokemon. That means that the card generation system needs to know about this and generate the image prompts and the metadata necessary for us to make this happen. To solve this problem, I ended up hard coding a set of adjectives to use for the image prompt, depending on what stage of evolution and what rarity the Pokemon is. And these things are sort of on separate dimensions. I mean, they are kind of related because as a Pokemon evolves, it does become more rare, but it's not a one-to-one -one relationship necessarily. For example, let's take a look at this first part here. For uh, for the rarity index, it can go between zero, one, or two, which is, you know, zero is common, one is uncommon, and two is rare. And depending on that value, we will modify the objective of the prompt. So the common Pokemons will be simple and basic. The uh, uncommon Pokemons will be strong or rare or special. And then the rare Pokemons will be legendary, epic, mythical. So these words are added to our prompt, which then kind of tell the AI the kind of theme and the kind of feeling we want with that image. And similarly for the evolution series, I have adjectives modifying the Pokemon as well at different stages of the evolution. So if it's part of an evolution series and it's at zero, then the adjective will be cute or young. And I have this chibi here as well, which is kind of like an art style that makes it look really young and like a baby. And then in the series two, I have three adjectives. I have young or dynamic and dynamic makes it like look like it's an action and it's agile. And I have one that's just blank because, you know, sometimes we just don't need an adjective. Like the average interpretation is enough. And then for uh, the rare Pokemon, I wanted to like fully evolved Pokemon. I wanted to be really big. So the adjective will be gigantic or massive just to make it feel like it's grown to like a fully evolved size. Finally, coming up with the specific mid-journey prompt to do all of the stuff that we just talked about um, was also quite challenging. We've got to make sure that we emphasize the creature type. So in the prompt uh, at the front, sometimes I'll put this double colon to tell Midjourney how much weight to give that subject. And as I might've mentioned before, this kind of tells Midjourney to emphasize showing that part of the prompt more than any other part. One of the problems I had with some of my prompts was that if I had too long of a description, sometimes I find that it focuses on the environment so for example, if I say like a lizard type Pokemon near a waterfall, sometimes the lizard will be really small and I'll just have like a big part just be the waterfall, which is, it's a really beautiful image, but at the same time, I do want the focus to be on the subject. So we have to add these weights to it. That's, you know, one of the challenges with prompting mid-journey. I also have to maintain a consistent style of art in the whole collection. So I tried a lot of different art styles in my prompt. Um, I tried anime, I tried manga, I tried, you know, watercolor, Studio Ghibli, uh, and I actually settled with something like this to generate the Pokemon looking art. So it'll be like an anime sketch with watercolor, which I feel like kind of looks most similar to some of the original classic series. Um, I also actually use different style prompts depending on the rarity and the evolution. For example, for the really baby level Pokemons or the first stage of the evolution, um, I use a different style to just make it look really cute and sort of really friendly friendly and not super intimidating and that changes as it grows stronger. And part of having a consistent style also means having really consistent environmental themes for each element and consistent color schemes for each element as well. So for example, for fire Pokemon, I want most of them to appear in a volcano or a desert environment. And then for water here, I want them to appear in ocean, lake or river. And then you can read the rest of the environments I've specified here. So uh, we have to model the type of environment that the Pokemon can appear in as determined by their element and also add that to the prompt. And sometimes the environment itself is not enough because the art on the image can still look, you know, really inconsistent if we just say, oh, hey, um, I wanted to appear in a forest. It could have so many different types of forest. So another good way I found to make the theming really consistent between the cards is to tell it what type of lighting and what type of colors to use. This way, each element can have a really distinct visual color as well. So for fire, it would be like sort of red and purple or blue and red. Or, or kind of like an orange galaxy type of background. For water, it would be teal and blue or auroras or bubbles. And for grass, it would be in a forest or it will have teal ambient lighting, sun rays, and then electricity will have lightning in the background, that kind of thing. So hard coding these visual kind of flavor to each element is also a way to get really consistent output from the images. Now putting all of that together from the metadata of the Pokemon 
turned out to be quite a challenging part. So this is what the function to generate the prompt looks like at the end of the day. First, I have the subject description itself, which is just like the you know fire type Pokemon with white armor or whatever it was we saw before. And then we add different weights to it depending on the rarity, add the detailed description. So if it has any special features or if it's holding any weapons, we also kind of contextualize it inside this environment. So, you know, this Pokemon appears in a maybe like a forest environment. We add the ambience, which is the lighting. So I want, you know, emerald ambient lighting. And then we add any kind of style suffix. So that would be like the anime sketch or the, the um, Studio Ghibli sketch. Finally, we'll put all of that together into one line. We'll set our aspect ratio and then we'll just clean up the commas and the spaces. So that just looks nice. And then I put the card name at the front, but I put the weight to zero so that I can find the card easily when I download it by the name. Uh, but I don't want that to actually be part of my image prompt. So putting that all together, I have a final image prompt that looks like this. And that is what I ended up using for this app. So once we put all of those pieces together, we finally have a system that can generate a collection of Pokemon cards. To try it out, I used this system to generate a collection of 100 Pokemon cards, and most of them were actually really good. There were a few bad ones in there because it turns out Mid Journey isn't quite good at drawing hands or feet. So that's something I'm gonna try avoid in the future. But anyway, let's take a look at the final results and some of my favorite examples from this collection. And you can see here the evolution logic works pretty well for a lot of these Pokemon. For example, this psychic type bird here, it looks kind of really young and really weak in this first form, uh, but it grows progressively stronger and then its final form just looks like a really legendary Pokemon. Here's another example with a lion themed Pokemon that evolves into, uh, well, I guess, a bigger lion. And I think that style changes in the prompts work pretty well between kind of like the basic form of a Pokemon that doesn't, you know, isn't supposed to look super scary or super strong to the fully evolved form, which does look really intimidating. Now, some of them, I found that it actually put a bit more emphasis on the environment, um, like this one here, which generally I didn't want it to do at first, but then it actually made some of the cards look more interesting because now this one tells more of a story about the setting that this Pokemon lives in rather than just being an image of the Pokemon itself without any kind of context. And I do find that certain types of Pokemon or styles generate images that look really close to the original Pokemon art collection. For example, this one here, uh, just the way that the outlines and the colors work, I feel really closely resembles the true Pokemon style. As opposed to this one, which I still think looks really good, but it just looks more generic, more like a you know typical fantasy art without any really distinctive um, Pokemon type styling. So, you know, I guess we have a variety. Another thing that I really liked and that kind of surprised me about this process was sometimes when I generate evolution series of a Pokemon, like this neutral type monkey called Lanceon here, Mid Journey actually preserve some of the details. I don't think it does this intentionally because the prompts are stateless, but somehow within the model, there are certain consistencies or certain patterns where if I tell it to generate a monkey with certain elements, you know, it kind of leans towards the same features. Like I'm talking about this kind of headband feature that has over its eyes, that, that sort of grayish thing there in this shape. Uh, when I generated a bigger version of this monkey, it kind of upscaled everything. It made the monkey have a weapon. Uh, it looks stronger and bigger, but it still has that detail around its face, which, you know, I don't really know what to make of that, but I thought that was kind of really cool and almost as if it was a deliberate choice by an artist. If you want to take a closer look at the code for this project, or maybe you don't want to look at the code, but you want to try out the generation program for yourself, um, then please find the GitHub link in the description of the video uh, because the entire code or the entire project is online on GitHub for free and you'll find all the instructions there on how to use it. And you don't need a lot of experience with Python if you don't want to dive into it. You can just set it up and run it with a command and it will generate the Pokemon for you. So you can try that out. And if you do end up generating some Pokemon, then please share your creations with me in the comments of the video because I'd love to see what you come up with. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this in the future that combines using Python with some AI elements, then please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that I can know to produce more of this type of content. 
Otherwise, thank you for watching. See you next time.